Uh, Joseph. Members, good morning. Good morning, officials. Uh, we're going to deal with the outstanding two outstanding items from our meeting dated the 11th of February. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind members that if there is direct or indirect pecuniary interest in any of the items on the agenda, please declare the nature of interest in accordance with uh, ROP 83 before you speak. And may I draw members' attention to uh, Rule 84 of the ROP uh, on uh, voting arrangements on items where you have a pecuniary interest. Now, we're dealing with paper EZ 2014-15-18 from Government Secretariat, Transport and Housing Bureau uh, to create a supernumerary directorate post for two years and six months from the 1st of April 2015 or with immediate effect upon approval of the Finance Committee, whichever the later in the Transport Branch of Transport and Housing Bureau, 1AO South Greek C. Uh, we introduced officials to members last time, so I'll skip that. Are the requests of members raised on the 11th of uh, February, the administration has submitted an information paper sent to members together with ESC 53 slash 1415 dated the 13th of February. Members, a show of hands, please, if you want to ask questions. We have Mr. Albert Chen. Five minutes, please, Mr. Albert Chen. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to understand the whole decision-making process because in the past when the Transport Department had any um, review to do, it uh, was always a serious and important decision because after a review or a consultancy, uh, there was bound to be a correlation uh, between uh, the future direction of development and the conclusion of the consultancy or the review. And most uh, decisions uh, will, uh, would uh, more or less uh, be based on uh, the scope or objectives of the study. That means uh, the study uh, formed the basis for future development. In 1999, uh, CTS-3 was conducted and then if uh, the scope of uh, the study is on the conclusion uh, based on CTS-3 is um, out of focus because uh, back then uh, the uh, transport uh, demand uh, is very different from what it was. Now it's 6 million uh, IVS uh, per, per year and back then I think it was only 20 million. Now it's 60 million per year from individual uh, visitors scheme. And I think there has been also a drastic change in our transport scene. Back then, uh, there were more uh, bus services uh, than railway services. But since then, uh, there's the commissioning of uh, the Junkwon O-Line uh, West Trail and uh, Kennedy uh, Town uh, stations and also at uh, the uh, Mount Shan line. So you can see the drastic changes since 1999 and also uh, major changes in our economy. So if you use the decision of 1999 uh, to carry out a public strategy study without including a railway, that is uh, ridiculous. And for details, of the study, some of them are regular items of the bureau. And regarding buses, I find this also strange. I've been consultants of many minibus trade associations, and I've um, uh, in the past I engaged in um, meetings uh, between the administration and uh, the trade associations. So uh, let me first uh, say that I agree that two posts should be created so that uh, they can work on um, traffic subsidy uh, for school children and the elderly, and it was a win-win situation. But then 
I mean, it's good for uh, minibuses to have two additional seats. However, uh, the government has always rejected this request from the trade. That was the position when I was heavily involved two years ago, but I don't know what is the position of uh, the government in recent two years. I'm sure you have um, some uh, thinking about uh, this direction. So I'd like to ask the administration when you decided and who decided that it was possible to add two additional seats to a uh, GM uh, to a uh, minibuses and was there any public consultation? Uh, do you have any public support? Yes, the foundation was laid in 1999. Of course, uh, it was um, more than a decade ago and some of uh, the recommendations um, might not be suitable now, but if you look at the uh, broad directions, uh, you will still find them valid nowadays. And in the paper, uh, we said that we sh uh, our transport should be a railway uh, based. Uh, there should be better coordination among different uh, modes of transport, uh, more transport infrastructure and the application of IT and uh, promotion of green uh, transport. These were um, directions set back then. Uh, why do we believe that it is appropriate to move forward based on uh, uh, those recommendations? Because they are still appropriate. When it comes to a review of our public transport um, direction, uh, the decision was uh, rather uh, broad based. For instance, uh, our uh, public transport should uh, be uh, railway based uh, to be supported by. Uh, Buses. Yes, it's true that uh, the situation has been reversed. Now we have more railway services than bus services. Since um, the railway has become our major mode of public transport, then should there be some adjustment in the uh, relative positioning of different modes of public transport? Going back to the situation of PLBs. Uh, the paper has no fixed idea as to whether additional seats should be added. It's just that in the past few years we have received different demands from political parties to ask us to study this possibility. So uh, the purpose of the study is to see whether it is feasible rather than um, preempting the uh, decision. And regarding railways, it's not that we haven't done anything about it. However, last year the administration published a railway development uh, framework 2014. So we've already done that and uh, the current study will uh, look at other modes of public transport. Mr. Sin chung -Kan, there was a motion debate sponsored by uh, Mr. Yik chi -Ling, uh, asking an uh, overall transport study to be conducted. Well, uh, however, uh, this point uh, was mm, absent in enclosures one and two. So, enclosures one and two uh, have uh, told us uh, some areas of the study. Do you think you have missed out any regarding uh, cross-boundary transport infrastructure? Now, as we all know. Uh, the XRL is progressing and uh, the Hong Kong Tram Macau Bridge is close to completion. And we're working on um, different uh, border crossing points and the uh, transport links are in the, uh, being planned. So the administration has planned well ahead uh, for cross-boundary infra uh, transport infrastructure, whether there is anything um, left out in this study. Now we have been uh, talking uh, about studies on a macro uh, perspective and we've also done a lot uh, in uh, the hardware and also in the management of uh, cross-boundary transport. But uh, for public transport, um, uh, it's uh, very important to us and uh, rely on market forces. Um, among 84 uh, studies, uh, cities in a study done recently, Hong Kong uh, has been ranked number one. So we want to uh, single out public transport, not that 
uh, we uh, have overlooked other areas, but rather uh, TAC on a question of traffic infrastructure completed a 140-odd page report at the request of the Secretary. And the government is studying that report and will respond soon afterwards. And then uh, uh, there will be some announcement on public or rather on a traffic um, measure policies. Now, it's not that we will only work on public transport, but it's just because we don't have uh, resources now, uh, we will do something later. Unfortunately, yesterday and also last week, uh, there were um, some uh, um, there, there, there would have been disputes um, against uh, IVS and um, parallel goods trading because uh, we have uh, many visitors from the mainland. Many of them uh, use uh, the railway but also cross boundary buses, public buses. Uh, whether at uh, the bus stops, the terminus, they have an impact on the community, but this is totally not mentioned in your paper. So shouldn't you uh, study the impact and implications? Uh, in your study, you're going to uh, cover school buses, but uh, this is something uh, rather stable. You can easily uh, project the number of uh, school buses I think the um, uncertainties involved are rather limited. Number four school uh, service, you have to review uh, whether the uh, student service can meet the demands and so forth. But for cross-boundary um, bus services, the impact is even uh, greater than that um, of school service. But how come you have left it out? Yes, buses and uh, yes, we are dealing with that. Uh, it is under a root uh, rationalization uh, enclosure one. Uh, we call it franchised bus service that would cover cross boundary services. For instance, uh, the B uh, routes uh, serving Tu Moon and Yunlong. We are uh, looking at it and. Uh, because of recent disputes, uh, we have made um, responses, corresponding responses at once uh, to divert traffic. And for school bus, well, at the beginning of each new term, we have requests uh, from our parents to see whether uh, a surface is a bit tight. So we will uh, balance the needs of um, different uh, sectors. Mr. Sinchunkan? Well, um, of course, you need to uh, meet the demand for school service. I fail to see what special arrangements. Uh, these are administrative arrangements. Do you need? Uh, please uh, complete uh, the uh, reply first. Yes, we have a variety of choices. However, uh, from uh, the uh, Operator's point of view, uh, they are competing for uh, the uh, same volume of uh, customers. From customers' point of view, uh, more choices uh, the better. But uh, we have to be very sensitive because uh, we don't want to upset this uh, uh, hard achieved uh, ecosystem of balance. Uh, last time I spoke on the final points of the topical study on um, the use of public transport by persons with disabilities. Um, some of the words being used were rather discriminatory. Um, they said after considering um, various factors including financial implications, they would um, review the, the feasibility of um, bringing more convenience um, for PWDs in using pu public transport, um, and uh, the administration have not shown any remorse. At the end of the letter, um, according to um, the annex of the paper, they said they have made amendments, and um, what they did was to move these um, um, these points forward um, to the top of the uh, the list. And uh, they mentioned that 
well, in my opinion, Chairman, um, barrier-free um, transport um, strategy should be the top of the priority. And uh, they just um, move the points around and uh, they consider it done. This is something I cannot accept. Um, the, the so-called considerations and financial implications, if the administration um, think they are so important, they should include them in all the papers. That's the motto of the Hong Kong administration. They always say that they have to consider all um, all factors and long-term financial implications before they conduct reviews. And uh, if they um, if they always um, use this as an overriding principle before they consider the use of public transport by T PWDs, then there's um, nothing they have to do. So my suggestion is to take out these words altogether. If you um, retain these wording, um, well, basically it, it, nothing has been changed. Um, the use of public transport by PWDs um, will not still be um, top of the list, Mr. Chen. Um, I'd like to uh, raise two points. Um, these are not overriding principles. Um, if I, if the government does not have to consider different factors, we wouldn't have to include them in the paper. And um, for the second point, um, the, the topical study is not the reason why we need a new post. Um, the PTSS comprises two parts. First, um, the uh, a study of selected topics with limited resources, hopefully without the need of um, creating a new post, we hope um, we can tackle more imminent issues um, within the current legislative term. So that's what that's how we identified the eight issues. And um, for roles and positioning review, um, we still haven't have a decision yet. And under Annex One, we um, raise certain issues, but whether um, these will be the final um, uh, s scopes of study, we would have to um, talk with our consultants, and uh, there will be further consultation before we um, make a decision. So uh, um, you can be assured that we um, the work is ongoing, and uh, those eight topics are not related to the creation of this post. According to the paper, um, I just want to po point out the uh, the direction of the entire strategy is wrong. You shouldn't only conduct reviews after considering all those different factors and financial implications. The government lacks a vision. If these are principles, if these are universal principles, then you should not include them on the papers because there's no point including them here. Under the topical study, um, sorry, your time's up. Um, do you want him to uh, address your question? I request the administration to take out those words altogether. All right. Next, um, Mr. Leung Yuchong. Thank you, Chairman. Last time I mentioned that um, um, the PTSS um, has to do with the policies of different um, units and departments, and um, the uh, the results of PTSS will be uh, rendered useless if um, the departments have different policies. Um, for example, for bus routes rationalization, um, if you, even if you have a result from the study, um, if the the THB has some um, um, an, another policy, then um, your the the results would not 
would not be useful. So the coordination is very important. It's not just about the study. It's about the um, coordination or um, urban or district planning in collaboration with other bureaus. Can you tell us um, what this study encompasses? Are you going to work with other bureaus? And uh, how's the coordination? For Yun Long, as far as I know, um, the biggest problem with the uh, res rationalization of bus routes is the um, ever-changing um, um, population landscape. In Hong Sui Kyu, um, we have um, um, thousands of uh, new PRH uh, units. Um, for instance, um, number 86, 86X has been rerouted and and uh, when the population um, demographics change again, what are you going to do? Um, if you, um, you you really face a dilemma whether to uh, rationalize these routes or not. And um, on the uh, increase of number of seats in minibuses, if you ask the public or minibus operators, they will uh, certainly um, agree to it, but um, taxi drivers and bus companies would um, disagree to that for sure. So it's not about um, the study. If if the public and um, mini bus operators are in favor, and um, bus companies and taxi drivers are um, uh, against it, what are you going to do? So really, it's about the coordination of different parties and their different interests. Some minibuses want to um, introduce a new routes, and the bus companies will certainly say say no to that. So, what's the point of having this study? To me, it's um, redundant. It's uh, it's not pragmatic. Instead, you tr you should try to balance the interests of different um, um, between different competitors. So, uh, you should. Um, focus on solving these problems instead of conducting the study. Uh, I'm not sure whether you agree to this view, Mr. Chen. Thank you very much for the question. Um, Cross-bureau and cross-departmental coordination is very important for sure. Um, I think you might not be fully aware of um, the the uh, the government structure. Um, we have a number of mechanisms in place. For instance, when we have a new um, property development, um, we have to conduct evaluations on um, the uh, transport services according to an ex the existing mechanisms, and um, our teammates who are in charge of tra transport will provide their views. For instance, for um, a uh, top-sided development um, um, adjacent to a rail station, we would assess the uh, um, passenger capacity. So uh, we we do place a lot of emphasis on cross bureau and cross departmental coordination um, in the PTSS for Yun Long. Um, I'd like to cite another example. Um, according to um, the fifth item of the RPR, we mentioned the long-term development of heavy rail, and we mentioned four four other points as well. The last two points are rather relevant. Um, when we um, evaluate the development of light rail, we would um, assess the um, the long-term um, transport demands of the new territory. So we are really looking at the entire area and then we can ascertain the role of light rail. So we won't just look at light rail and we won't just look at um buses. As you know the West Rail Line is very um it, it's very um pretty full during um the rush hours. So we really need a comprehensive review of the transport plan in the entire um, northwestern New Territories, and we will report the results back to um, the members at a later date. So we have never ignored the importance of 
um, the coordination between different bureaus. You mentioned the interests of different um, competitors, but for us, public interest is most important. Um, while allowing more choices for the public, we will also ensure that the trades have um, be able to be um, they are able to achieve sustainable development. If our trades cannot survive, the public will suffer at the end. So, really, they go hand in hand, rather than one or another. Um, with um, healthy development of the trades, the public will have more choices. This is challenging, very sure. Miss Lee, the DAB um, agrees with the importance of this study. And uh, we have request we have requested the administration to carry out these studies time and again. Um, I I don't expect you to be able to finish it within two years and six months because we have lots of stakeholders. And uh, and uh, as uh, some members mentioned, the uh, interests um, there are a lot of vested interests among the players. Um, we have agreed that um, Hong Kong is a very small city, and as such, we should um, use the rail system as our backbone. But we can see that um, at the same time, a lot of other transport operators face a lot of difficulties, and um, the qualities have taken a hit. Um, ferries, buses, taxis, um, ferries are more or less gone, and um, they face aging in the, the drivers. And uh, these uh, um, uh, the, the, the trades have been looking um, forward to uh, for the government to do something. So I'd like you to confirm, um, as the administration just said, um, the topics are very complicated. Um, under Annex One and Annex Two, or Enclosure One and Two, um, the, the topics. Um, will still have to be confirmed by the consultants. And uh, on the CTS three conducted in 1999, um, I think you should continue to study the the um, strategies, um, including um, the use of technology in public transport, the promotion of green transport. I think these are completed, uncompleted. I think technology can certainly help with the development of public transport for buses. Um, in a lot of cities, they have um, um, reminders, um, reminder systems to remind um, the passengers to to get off. Um, you did not mention the use of bikes. Hong Kong, of course, is very small, but we shouldn't rule out um, the widespread use of um, bikes in many parts. Of the territory, um, I think you should also ex expand the scope of the study. Um, for instance, to include ferries, um, there is very there has always been uh, there has always been very little support for ferries, and um, we are seeing less and less routes. Um, the harbor is one of Hong Kong's major assets. You should not only look at existing ferry routes, but instead look at the entire um, blueprint for developing ferries. I think we should also study um, school buses. Um, I have received a lot of letters from schools that they are unable to secure school buses, especially at the start of uh, of school terms. So this is a problem which need to be addressed. And uh, as a member said, cross boundary. Um, bus service must also be looked at, and um, I I think you should confirm um, that the scopes should uh, cover um, areas more than enclosures one and two. And um, Mr. Chen, yes. Thank you, Ms. Lee, for your questions. Uh, I will reply uh, to your questions uh, briefly. It's true that in enclosures two and three, well, um, we've just have a framework of our work. And enclosure two uh, covers um, issues to be covered in that uh, topical study that do not require any um, 
uh, post creation. And uh, for enclosure one, it's true that uh, after consultation, uh, the framework can be adjusted. And you asked uh, whether uh, some of uh, the um, directions set out in 1999 can uh, be further uh, pursued. That's true. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the time when a bus uh, would reach a particular stop through our department, uh, we have uh, been very actively discussing with the franchise bus companies. We hope that uh, uh, using uh, mobile phones uh, or on uh, the internet and also at uh, bus stops, we will know when a certain bus would arrive. These expensive things, uh, we will see how much we can do and how quick we can do it without uh, affecting uh, bus fares. And for bikes in new towns and rural areas, we'll continue to promote the use of bikes. Bike friendly policy uh, is a confirmed uh, established policy of the Bureau, and uh, we will continue uh, to um, promote the use of bikes. And for ferries, yes, Ms. Lee has made a very good point. We will not just look at existing uh, routes. Some routes have troubles. In early next year, we're going to cover that in uh, the topical study to see uh, whether some uh, assistant, um, assistance uh, can be provided to uh, these existing routes to help them. Thank you. Mr. Yu Shi Wing. Uh, it's been 15 years or 16 years uh, since the last uh, CTS was done. A comprehensive review of uh, the uh, relative roles and positioning of our public transport uh, services is long overdue. Uh, for uh, bus uh, or uh, franchised uh, bus service or or rather um, driving licenses. Uh, there are different categories and uh, the scope is also restricted and therefore we uh, have a problem in school service. So can you relax the um, restrictions under different driving licenses to address this problem? And when we uh, review overall uh, mass transport, then uh, parking spaces uh, should be an issue. I don't know whether that will be covered in your review. I know that in Kaitech you are gradually uh, recovering the parking spaces. Then uh, coaches and vehicles uh, will have difficulties finding parking spaces. So uh, will you take this um, opportunity to review the distribution of car parking spaces in the territory? Mr. Chen. Uh, driving uh, the licensing of uh, coaches. Well, uh, coaches are meant to uh, support franchised bus service uh, at peak hours when people are rushing to the town centre to work. It's true that uh, for a while we relaxed uh, the uh, licensing of uh, coaches leading to some traffic problems and TAC asked us to tighten the um, arrangements again. Uh, so this policy has been implemented after um, a study by the TAC, but uh, we, because of uh, the demand for school services, we will see whether we can relax the, the licensing without affecting the equilibrium of uh, the trade. And for other non-franchised bus, uh, bus services, we will uh, use the same approach. We cannot um, liberalize it too much in one go because it would be difficult for the uh, sectors to uh, adjust. Last year, TAC submitted a report on traffic congestion to the administration. In the report, uh, the issue of parking spaces was addressed. We've just got the uh, report for a month or so. After the administration has studied it, there will be uh, some responses. Mr. Yu, I'd like to know whether 
who are deposed uh, to be created uh, will it cover um, any proposal for parking spaces? No, I don't think you, we, we need to wait because uh, uh, this new post uh, will only deliver uh, its report after two and a half years, whereas uh, TAC's report we are now already studying, and I think uh, we can uh, respond faster. Mr. Lee check in. The question I asked last time was not answered on ferry services. I believe we should use the uh, uh, Hong Kong uh, cross up a tunnel mode. That means uh, the tunnel is owned by the administration and uh, the uh, relative fares are tariff already uh, confirmed and management is being done by a company. Can we do the same for ferries? The administration determines the fares and uh, ferry operators can uh, bid uh, to uh, provide the services on behalf of the administration. So, there is no need for uh, ferry operators to think of different ways to uh, increase their revenue, uh, feeling that they will uh, raise ferry fares. Under my proposal, the administration uh, determines the fares and uh, the operator is given a lump sum um, payment, of course, with subsidy from the administration. In the long term, it will benefit residents on Lama and uh, Changchao where they don't have any alternatives. So will you consider this mode uh, in your study as well? And uh, we've um, asked uh, this question from time to time. Uh, the uh, study in 1999 was called a comprehensive transport strategy. But here, uh, the uh, study here is called PTSS uh, Roles and Positioning Review. Does that mean that you are going to uh, cover everything with the exception of railways? I think uh, roles and uh, positioning uh, review is uh, run similar to a comprehensive transport review, but in the CTS, uh, you uh, use a railway as the backbone. So is it true that in the current study, you are not going to uh, consider a railway as well? I'd like to uh, know the difference between a CTS and the current study. Mr. Chen, yes, uh, the two are a bit different. Comprehensive transport study. We use transport, and here uh, the terminology is public transport. So we consider management, uh, infrastructure, and uh, also construction of um, various uh, infrastructure. But here, this study, uh, we have a narrow down the scope and uh, for uh, the. Uh, mode for a ferry uh, service, uh, on the delivery of ferry service by uh, Mr. Lee Chuck Yen. Yes, this is rather innovative. Ferry services face some problem in Hong Kong, and uh, we have provided some subsidy, but we would like to retain uh, the efficiency and quality unique to uh, commercial operation as far as possible. If uh, the operator doesn't have uh, to uh, uh, share the burden, then they are bound to be side products. So it's a question of give and take. And um, in the coming study, we will uh, consider Mr. Lee's proposal as far as possible. In fact, this is not the first time uh, uh, we've heard of it. Uh, since uh, Mr. Lee mentioned it, I think uh, we are duty bound to revisit the issue. Mr. Lee Chuck Yen. So, the difference uh, between a CTS and PTSS. You're saying that for CTS, you will consider road management as well, but for PTSS, I don't think you are going to consider 
the uh, impact of railway on the overall positioning of different modes of transport, with the exception of the light rail. Let me reiterate my position on this. I want you to uh, scrap light rail altogether. But is it true that in uh, PTSS you are not going to uh, cover railway? We've already completed our review of our railway system. Last year, uh, we uh, provided a report uh, asking for seven new uh, links to be uh, provided. And this uh, PTSS is a follow-up to that study. Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Uh, the DS uh, said that the current uh, equilibrium achieved in uh, the um, uh, transport scene, public transport scene, uh, uh, was um, hard earned, and as a result, you don't want to upset the equilibrium. And uh, what we see here in your management is just tinkering with the uh, current system. But then you have uh, to go back to the uh, findings or recommendations of the CTS2. Back then, uh, there were two important decisions. First, to uh, control the growth of uh, public vehicles, and second, to acquire priority uh, to uh, a railway in the use of road service. But uh, here uh, we have very uh, just some uh, very broad brush approach. Talk about uh, overall coordination. But here, I'm not very comfortable. The ATCUs covered uh, in uh, your PTSS do not warrant the creation of a new post. So, do you have any concrete thinking about this? And secondly, uh, the report on uh, traffic congestion provided recommendations. Deficiency of public transport has everything to do with the efficiency of road use. Our public transport is responsible for carrying 70% of our commuters, but uh, they have only account for 10 or percent of the vehicles on the road. So. TAC has completed that report. It's another team within the administration working on the implementation of the recommendations in that report. Is that team of a sufficiently high level? If not, you may have to create another post to uh, tackle that report. And if uh, the task force or the team is sufficiently high level, then uh, the um, new uh, the incumbent of new posts will uh, be much more effective. Yes, there are three uh, deputy secretaries within the bureau, and one deputy secretary is uh, responsible uh, for uh, that report. And he reports directly to the PS and the secretary for TH. So uh, the report is uh, being worked on. So Mr. Wu can uh, be assured. Our public transport is renowned uh, for is um, efficiency and uh, coverage, and uh, our public transport services are not expensive as uh, they are in Tokyo or London. They are rather successful. We don't want to uh, ruin them. We want to do even better. That doesn't mean that we will not uh, disturb uh, vested interests. It's just that we want to ensure that public interest will not be uh, jeopardized. It is established policy to a priority to public transport in the use of road. Um, some of our work are rather obvious, so we did not um, specifically put them in paper. For instance, um, public transport is always the top priority.
Um, but since you asked, we can uh, reassure you that this is the case. And uh, we already mentioned that um, pub public transport should be assigned priority in uh, road use. So we will um, do even better in the next two and a half years. You said public transport is always the priority. And um, is this really a core um, a core issue in the entire study? Well, it's the uh, it's a predominant principle. Um, if we do not um, give public transport the, the priority, how can we encourage more people to use public transport? Because we only have so many roads, and um, the more um, public transport is used, the better. Mr. Tenkapu, um, on CTS four, on uh, the review of CTS three, um, I think um, there's a need to uh, conduct reviews. And uh, you said you have to create a new posts in order to conduct the RPR. Um, you mentioned things like light rail. Um, these are all issues which have to be um, looked at at depth, and we have to balance the interests of different stakeholders. S so, uh, um, I think the creation of um, the new post is necessary. Um, well, I think THB is busy enough, and um, so I, I have no problems with creating this new post. But I do want to know your expectations. Um, last time on the TAC's report, you promised to respond as soon as possible on uh, on the which areas you have to um, work on. I just want to clarify when you will um, respond to these points, whether it's the first quarter, second quarter, or by way of legislative measures or um, in the policy or in budgets and um what do you expect um to accomplish in the next two point five years in terms of the study and the r p l last week, I met with the uh, non franchise buses trade and uh they said they so, some people said um they they don't have a lot of problems except parking and uh but another group um, that operate um, school service face a lot of challenges, and um, if the, if the coaches can accommodate um, twenty or even more passengers, why wouldn't they? Why shouldn't they allow to be um, to carry more passengers? They are a dedicated service, and they don't compete with taxis and minibuses, so. Their recommendation is very clear. Are you going to address their um, proposals, and what do you expect to achieve two and a half years later? Um, the traffic congestion report contains more than 150 pages. It was published in December. It has been uh, more, uh, almost two months, and and uh, we are very anxious to tackle this problem. We have another deputy secretary. Um, who is responsible? So I'm sure you can see the results very soon. And um, over the 2.5 year time frame, the topics we set under enclosure one um, would include certain things. Whether we can implement the recommendations as um, immediately really depend on the nature of the recommendations by the trades. Um, some companies um, might feel that their interests are being compromised because of the uh, um, competition. So, really, this is uh, something which the government cannot control. So, um, I think it would help if we have more detailed discussions so that everyone knows what's going on. And uh, what's the way forward? And with ample communication, I'm optimistic that we will see some results. Um, 
within 2.5 years, but I cannot promise that um, which which scopes of work can be um, promised. So what what does it mean? Can you give us any confidence um, on uh, the issues you can solve and why you need to create this new post? I think we have to um, ensure the livelihoods of different companies and uh, the drivers um, are facing more and more challenges. I think this is a, a good question, but I think the trades can be assured that um, all the, the issues mentioned under Enclosure 1 would encompass different transport trades and not just rail. Um, we raise certain issues, but it doesn't mean the trades cannot um, propose other topics. So I'm sure we can find a way um, to ensure the livelihoods of everybody. Dr. K. K. Kwok, Chairman, last time we already said that we wouldn't stand in the way of the study. It's necessary. Um, but some of the core issues remain um, unmentioned and um, for instance, the mode of operation for public transport. And uh, we are looking at two issues. First, um, the long-term development of MTR. We've had a lot of discussions at the Legislative Council. Um, we have talked about converting it into a wholly owned, wholly owned um, business. And uh, we talked about the fares and routes. Um, and uh, some people feel that it's not concentrating on what it should do, and um, it's involved heavily in uh, property development. And second, the subvention mode. I agree with a lot of members that um, MTRCL receives full government subvention in terms of land, engineering works, and so on and so forth. Even the CEO is paid $10 million per year, so it enjoys the, the the best of both worlds. And so in this case, how can um, franchise and non-franchise buses and minibuses compete with MTR? So really, is the government being fair? If you don't review um, the operation mode or subvention mode, you are not getting to the root of the problem. So um, my question for the administration is, do you plan to do something on that? And uh, if you if you do, what are you going to do? If not, what's the reason? Mr. Chen, the roles and positioning review is really about um, budgeting um, and making ends meet and ensuring um, service quality of public transport. The subvention you mentioned it's just one um, one source of income, and uh, not all kinds of public transport rely solely on subventions. Um, Hong Kong has been operating public transport on on a commercial basis for a long, long time, and we can all see the results. Um, we uh, continue to review the subvention levels. And we do see some inadequacies um, um, with the expansion of the rail system because of the uh, increasing popularity. Um, we have looked at the roles of other types of transport. And um, the uh, report last year um, suggested um, creating six new rail lines. So we had to um, look at the roles of other kinds of public transport, and that's why we suggest the creation of this new post. Um, if we don't create this post, there's no way we can handle the workload. We um, still have to tackle um, eight issues relating to public transport. But um, I don't think we must um, address the subvention modes of each type of transport. This will certainly be looked at, but um, not all kinds of public transport would need more subventions. 
and uh, since the MTR merger, you can see that it has brought a lot of convenience and for instance, passengers won't have to um, interchange as often as in the past and uh, um, the management has been um, integrated and streamlined and uh, s since 2007 we conducted a fair review two years ago and uh, we will conduct another review soon. All along we have encouraged the MTRCL um, to maintain its principle of financial prudence and we have encouraged them to um, introduce more offers and discounts for locals and and uh, in terms of the major shareholder um, they have always um, the government has always reminded MTRCL um, to remember its social responsibility whether we need to conduct a comprehensive review through this study um, might be a question we ask of ourselves and um, when you only um, look at if you only study MTRCL um, well there's no finish line and you wouldn't know where to start it's a statutory body so I, I think we should um, come back to a more reasonable basis and take it as a starting point. Anything else? Um, any members who wish to speak in the first round? Um, Albert Chan, Fernando Chang, Leng Yu Chong would like to speak in the second round. Five minutes each, please. Mr. Albert Chan. Chairman, I support the government's um, decision to assign certain staff to um, conduct the study. But as you all know, um, the study you mentioned is only conducted once every many years. So the work, the scope of study is extremely important. You have to think about what to include and what not to include. It has to be um, taken into context. Um, as I stressed last time, whenever the government conducts such studies, they usually have um, various motivations. Of course, we don't want to speculate, um, but uh, looking at past experience, um, the, gov the studies ser um, serve to achieve um, certain um, um, motives. Right now, um, it's um, you are not including the study of the rail system, which is a big mistake. And um, last year, we had 60 million passengers, um, six times the, the figure, six times of that um, in the previous study. And uh, um, the, the population of Yunlong has grown from 440,000 to 580, and in Western New Territories, the population has raised from 1.77 to 2.01, and uh, the uh, population, um, well, in um, for the number of railway passengers, um, the uh, um, the passenger throughput has also increased substantially. You ought to conduct a comprehensive review, and the public has mentioned many times um, the issue with um, public transport interchange or MTR interchange um, under the enclosures. You said you would um, review the financial positions of the ferry trades. Well, many um, members of the public have strong views about fare increases by MTRCL, although it is got uh, tens of millions of dollars in um, profits. Uh, the government has provided subsidies to our railway uh, through uh, land grant, uh, land auctioning and uh, property developments uh, with um, making huge profits. 
However, things have changed so much. There was never a public consultation, though members supported this. And that is for the government to uh, fully uh, fund the uh, construction of uh, railway projects to be operated by MCLCL. So a lot of things have to be reviewed and not covered in this enclosure. One or two decades ago, the administration promised uh, to provide interchange at certain locations. We said that um, uh, there should be uh, interchange and also, uh, and also a free interchange services. For instance, on uh, the southern part of uh, Lantau, there should be uh, more uh, vehicles. And uh, you talked about um, Lantau, Texas, but it is not covered here. There are many issues considered important by the community, and they are not mentioned here at all. And if you pass the paper, then uh, when we ask you again, you will say that it was not covered in the report and or consultancy. You have to wait for another decade. So I urge members not to pass the paper. The government should withdraw it and tell us the decision-making process. You talked about uh, PLBs. You did not tell me what was the decision process like. So these eight areas. Uh, Mr. Chen, please allow Mr. Chen time to answer your questions on the decision-making process. Yes, uh, this is uh, the third time Mr. Chen asked uh, we don't have CTS4. The impression we got from Mr. Chen is if we do not have the comprehensive picture, we cannot uh, consider the uh, individual areas. Well, I'm asking about the decision-making process and no public consultation. You're operating in a black box. Please allow Mr. Chen to reply first. Topical and comprehensive. Now, we are dealing with uh, public transport, and they uh, count for 90%. Of the traffic, so uh, it may not uh, be um, comprehensive, but it is the majority of uh, the overall picture. And do we just look at public transport? Of course not. I've said many, many times we have addressed the issue of railway, and uh, we made announcements last September. Our railway development strategy. We mapped out the new way forward. Seven new uh, railway lines will be studied and uh, TAC at the request of the Secretary has compiled a report on traffic congestion. The administration is studying the report. There will be policy issues. Um, there will be issues uh, to uh, respond to that. And the directions uh, set out in CTS 3, now uh, we have not uh, dumped them. We uh, will continue to um, implement the uh, the conclusions. Mr. Chen, please uh, care for the second round. The, I think he has totally entirely evaded my questions. Dr. Fernando Zhang. Thank you, Chairman. I'm concerned uh, how our public transport is serving uh, PWDs. As said by Mr. Chen, 90% of our commuters use public transport. And obviously, our population is aging. According to um, government statistics, in 2013, we have a million uh, elderly persons over 65 years old. Uh, by 2041, the figure would, drum, would jump to 2.6 million. So, from one out of every seven to close to one out of three will be elderly persons. And even as near as 2021, the population of those over 65 uh, would reach about 1.5 million. Uh, so uh, our aging population is growing rather quickly. And people with limited uh, mobility, well, they will use public transport more and more often. We have a electric wheelchair and assisted walking aids will uh, draw out people to use public transport. In the past, we were not able to uh, use public transport. 
in the uh, uh, PTSS, you're going to study the positioning of different public transport services. And in the topical study, I've asked you a number of times not to add so many qualifiers uh, to accessible transport facilities for PWDs. The trend is more and more people with limited mobility will use public transport. Where is this addressed in your PTSS? Where can we see that this uh, will be uh, one of the mainstay of our future public transport services? The last part in your topical study will cover PWD, but this is too limited. Uh, even uh, people with uh, baby uh, prams, elderly persons, uh, the chronically ill, they are not necessarily PWDs. They may not even be elderly, but their mobility is limited. Where will you address or reflect this growing need in your PTSS? Yes, our population is aging, and our public services, including transport services, uh, should be barrier-free and accessible to all. This is an um, uh, uh, an inevitable trend. I think everything can be included in the enclosure. However, this is not the way we um, do things. We have singled out eight. Pressing issues which we believe that even without extra resources, they should be tackled. And that's why we have placed uh, the point about PWDs in enclosure too. These are things that have to be done even without new resources. And enclosure one is about roads and positioning. All public transport services should be barrier free. After the topical study, the conclusion can be uh, absorbed by the PTSS. Well, as uh, Mr. As Dr. Jones said, there is no need for us uh, to repeat everything in each and every point. For instance, quality bus service. How? How do we define quality? And uh, addition of seats to PLBs, should we include one for uh, wheelchair users? Uh, stakeholders, including Dr. Zheng, have made this point to the secretary. And uh, Mr. Chen asked, uh, uh, what was the decision-making process? Well, uh, one of the um, uh, the step was uh, people like Dr. Zheng, who uh, made the request to the administration. So my answer to Dr. Zhao is we will certainly do what you suggest. Mr. Lang Yu Zhong. Uh, uh, we would like to see whether the study is uh, useful and uh, pragmatic. Of course, a study is always useful so that we can have more information to assist the decision making. But the question is, will the study be as useful as claimed? Your replies to my questions sounded uh, very pleasant. You said that you would take into account public interest more than interest of uh, the sectors. Yes, uh, this is so pleasing. Sounds excellent. but. I query whether at the end of the day it will be really like this. This is my biggest question. Well, my experience is uh, neither too much or too little. I have been a district councillor for 30 years. Whenever we have new residential developments or when we have a new proposed development, there would certainly be a transport study. But I have never, I've yet to see a traffic 
assessment to say that a new residential development has traffic issues. And I once I uh, had agreement with uh, PLB companies, and uh, all the routes were decided, and the only objector uh, was uh, from the franchised bus companies. And as a result, uh, the administration asked the PLBs not to cover that particular area. So I have the impression that there is collusion uh, among government departments. Well, when there is a development proposal, of course, the DD cannot say no. It will always say that the traffic assessment is perfectly okay. You said that you would put public interest before sectorial interest. So we consulted, for us, we consulted uh, the residents, and then we had an agreement uh, with uh, um, um, a GMB operator, but uh, the franchise bus company objected, and so uh, the proposal was vetoed. So how can you reflect in reality that public interest uh, should take priority? Mr. Chen, thank you. Mr. Leung, for sharing with us or reminding us how, uh, in the light of your three decade experience as a district councillor, I hope that we can do a better job when it comes to uh, the provision of traffic services, transport services in the future. Without an exact case in point, it's hard for me to respond, but um, there might be uh, some. Um, defect in the communication. We will certainly not do something just for the sake of uh, the um, uh, industry compromising public interest, certainly not. This PTSS will look at the development of different sectors at a higher level. And if you see anything uh, you find problem problematic in your work, do let us know. No, uh, we are being asked whether we support this PTSS. Well, if uh, this PTSS is not going to bear fruit, why should we support you? We must be able to deliver something for the community. Take a new Yunnong Center as example. We have a similar phenomenon. The changes were so big, and I don't want to quote individual cases, but there are ample examples. So, how can you ensure that the recommendations from the PTSS can really be implemented? Mr. Chen, we will submit a report to the Council after the PTSS. So it's certainly okay for us to submit a report of the PTSS to the Council. And we can also submit a report on implementation so that the Council can monitor our work. Does that answer your question? So so what do you want me to do? Well, if he's not happy, he can ask in the second round. Mr. Wu Xinwa, shouldn't it be Xin Chung Ka? Okay, thank you. Thank you. The DS said again that the study has uh, got the concept of uh, parity to public transport. I don't know uh, whether you uh, will also um, control the growth of private vehicles which are not so efficient when it comes to the use of road resources. In CTS-2, these two were clear directions, and in CTS-3, they became parameters only. So, uh, Mr. Chen, can you 
Revise your paper. Para 1 of Enclosure 1 in particular. Can you reiterate the two conclusions in 2CTSS? And according to Mr. Chen, uh, you, the government would continue with the two directions established in the 2CTSS. So can you, or you, include the conclusions of the two CTSS in this study so that we can understand that you will really uh, proceed on the basis of the two CTSS and then you can uh, study the roles and positioning of various uh, services. Mr. Chan. Um, maybe I will share um, how we can carry out the work. The words used in CTS2 were um, to uh, implement the uh, use of road by public transport. Um, public, trans um, the, the public transport based um, service will be, um, will be the words used and uh, we will look at the um, congestion report published by the TAC and um, we will take a holistic view. We cannot only look at um, the use of roads by public transport. We have to um, assess the, uh, the overall use of roads in Hong Kong and uh, maximize the usage efficiency. And uh, we will um, review the roads of public transport. Both go hand in hand. If we have a transport strategy, um, we would have um, specific initi initiatives under RPL. Take buses as an example. You all know that we have um, dedicated bus lanes, and um, it's uh, they are spe uh, particularly important um, um, at toll plazas. So can we? enhance the roles of these bus lanes. But that said, we have to consider the situations of specific roads. We cannot have bus lanes on every road. So we really have to look at the road conditions and see um, if there are technical constraints we have to overcome. So under a holistic policy, we would try to assess um, we will see how we um, assign priority to public transport, and uh, we'll come back to the Legislative Council later. How about um, the, the the use of private vehicles? If we have less vehicles, then um, more forms of public transport can use the roads. So you will amend the wording for that part also, right? Um, for the first few lines uh, in enclosure one, we've made it very clear that um, the entire roads and positioning review um, uses the railway as the backbone of our public transport system. And uh, we would look at the results of the congestion report and see how we can assign priority to public transport. Mr. Sin Chong Kai. Chairman, um, I just want to m make it clear what I want you to do. In enclosure two, um, you mentioned the issues to be covered by the topical study, and there are eight topics in total. I'd like you to add uh, to add one more topic on. Uh, on the impacts on public transport by cross-boundary visitors. And 78% uh, of our inbound visitors are from the mainland, and many of them are individual um, visitors. I'm not trying to create conflicts, but we have to anticipate potential problems. So that's the entire objective. So uh, we are looking at a proven problem. We have received a lot of complaints from the public. Um, 
that um, visitors on the individual traveling scheme has brought a lot of inconvenience in terms of transportation. So um, it's up to you to provide the solutions. I'm not asking for an answer right now. Um, but under the eight topics in RPL, I don't see any um, mention of how we can mention the uh, pressure on public transport created by cross boundary visitors so that's my clear that's my question it's very clear i'm sure you are aware of the situation as well will you consider adding one more topic under rps um um without the need to create a new post rpl uh, we um, ex uh, we hope we can uh, complete the work of rpl within this legislative year we can certainly add one more topic and uh, report back to the council. But um, I'm not sure whether this can be implemented within a spe specified time frame. Um, we identified eight issues after um, consultation with the members. We are not really looking at the carrying capacity of public transport. Um, we are looking at the, the time of use, the usage, um, the use of roads, etc. We can certainly take in thousands of passengers. Um, buses for buses, the capacity is usually seventy percent. Um, for MTR, um, we still have a lot of capacity, but of course we have to. Um, think about the comfort and safety but I'm I, I can say that our public transport have ample capacity to take in more visitors we can take in a lot more visitors but if we have too many passengers at the same time we might see long queues at various um, boundary crossing points for instance sometimes taxis are in great demand, but of course we will look at the um, the issue um, very soon. Um, when you um, talk about studies, you mention a lot of negative things. If you ask the average Hong Kong citizen um, whether um, the pressure created on public transport by visitors and um, um, the pressure faced by school service, if you compare both things. Um, school service is much easier to tackle, and um, just you, you only have to uh, adjust the, the workflows. Um, so it's it's very obvious. You are not really answering um, the imminent needs of the public. You said you have carrying capacity, but it really depends on the time of the day. Um, um, the, just go to the MOT station um, during the rush hours. How many trains do you have to wait? A lot of people live in the Eastern District. Um, we have um, almost a thousand passengers per train. It's very serious. How are you going to tackle the issue? Yes, I've heard your comments. Do you have anything else to add? No. Um, anything to add, Mr. Sin Jung Kai? Next, Mr. Leung Kuo Hung, Chairman. Well, I think it's um, pointless for us to ask questions because the railway system, which affects um, all other kinds of public transport, has been excluded because you said you conducted RDS in 2014. I understand your logic, but I don't understand your um, your, your your premise and on RDS 2014. When did the public um, find out that you did the study? I understand that you had brought it in front of Lechko before. And uh, during the uh, merger of the two railways, we faced a legislative problem. Um, it's like a the, the merger was like a like a barrier, and uh, no matter what we say, as Lechko members, 
as long as the barriers here, we cannot um, propose amendments. I want to point out that um, you should not take the RDS two hundred one four as the uh, the underlying principle because it's um, n not valid. It's just um, it was just a paper published by yourself alone. Um, I agree that the long term development of our railways are um, is very important. You said um, we have done very well in terms of public transport and. Um, and uh, we are doing way better than other countries and cities. If we just put this aside for a moment, um, service quality is not just about the railways. It's also about other kinds of public transport. But um, our railway is enjoying way too much privileges. My question for you is, A lot of members are concerned with the issue of cross boundary visitors, and um, we have too many boundary crossing points. In other words, we have um, lots of um, um, tubes or, or channels, and, and uh, the water level will be too high, so to speak. Um, Unless we assume that these visitors would not use public transport at all, which is really improbable. So the questions from other members are very valid. I've not seen the situation in any other city. When you look at Singapore, they would not um, add um, lots of boundary facilities on the request of Indonesia or Malaysia, etc. But this is exactly the case in Hong Kong. Um, we have totally ignored internal demand. Um, in in Singapore, they can travel to Malaysia um, by vehicle, and they would buy their um, necessities there. So you have to conduct a review of the railway system. And second is the issue with private vehicles. And um, in the future, when um, a lot of uh, millionaires drive their vehicles to Hong Kong, what are we going to do? So that's really the, the the objective of the Hong Kong Joint Macau Bridge, right? Otherwise, there's no um, freaking point of having it. But um, if you don't um, um, rationalize these initiatives, well, I was involved in the Philip Bustring um, battle. The pro-establishment can complain a lot. I'm not going to um, be compassionate in the future. Please be specific. You are just asking for um, for criticisms. Um, so long as CUI Learn and the pro-establishment can. Um, Retain the same attitude. The public service or the civil service is in trouble. Thank you very much, Mr. Albert Chen. Would you why um, would like to speak in the third in the third round? Do any members wish to speak in the first or second round? Mr. Leung Kuohong, five minutes, please. On private vehicles, um, with the um, launch of um, the Hong Kong Joint Macau Bridge, how many private vehicle users are we going to have? This is not something for you to decide. Well, we we do know how uh, the uh, licenses uh, are issued, so. You are groping in the dark, and if you have uh, so many uh, uh, boundary cr uh, crossing points, if you don't allow vehicles from the main to come to Hong Kong, it's a waste of resources. So this is bound to happen sooner or later. 
and it's a waste of time if you do not do something about it. Currently, we are private cars have taken up too much of our road space. And when people go uh, vacant um, or only um, or, or empty or half filled, our buses, I feel the same. But I have similar feelings about private cars. Will we? Arrange uh, to travel in carpools, for instance. Uh, this is a green mode of uh, transport, so um, I don't mind doing so. I've only got one uh, car, and I don't mind providing carpool. And I'll ask my driver uh, whether uh, there is a goods uh, to be uh, carried as well, so that we can reduce the number of tricks of trips. You say that buses are taking up our road space. Dare you say the same of private cars? I do because I don't want to be run again. I don't mind if um, owners of private cars do not vote for me. But dare you do that? Uh, dare you offend the uh, car dealers? Does the administration dare to do that? Does uh, Siwa Lang dare to come out to say that a private car is such a dream, a toy of an of um, of an adult man? Uh, all you need to do is to put it in your garage and uh, wax it from time to time. Secondly, you have not covered a railway and tunnels in your study. Uh, I had a criminal. Uh, record because of uh, tariff hikes of a tunnel. Would you dare to buy back the um, Western Harbour crossing? Xiang Chong Xiao uh, is a tycoon from Sichuan and he has bought many shareholdings of, uh, of a tunnel and also a franchise buses. So, we have three tunnels. One is so congested, and uh, the other two are underutilized. So it is you don't need to uh, be a sage or wise, be very wise in order to see this. Are you going to tackle this? Are tunnels part of our public transport? And what about our bridges? The airport express is a scandal. Who provoked? Provide the funding for the construction of the air, of uh, the um, airport express. All of them uh, should be beheaded. Now, uh, this is a common. This is common in uh, IS. We are now like IS. Uh, do you want any reply from them? I'm explaining to civil servants. You may uh, say that legislators are very critical nowadays. Well, we have no choice because of political e uh, ecosystem. If uh, we say anything in the future, you will accuse us of filibustering. Well, because uh, the premises or the preamble is wrong, we have to say this to you. You must address uh, the long title or the preamble here. You will say. Otherwise, uh, you would accuse us of not mentioning this at the uh, ESC meeting. Now, if you do not revise this paper, I might have to uh, invoke my power to force you to make some undertaking. I don't know whether you understand me or not. Uh, I only have the intelligence of a five-year-old. I, uh, my uh, goddaughter, taught me to say what I said just now. All right, three members would like to speak for the third time. Mr. Albert Chen, Mr. Wu Chi Wan, and Mr. Leung Yu Chong. I have to draw a line here because uh, by 10.30, I have to return this venue to the Economic Development Panel. And I've also got a motion from Mr. Albert Chen under uh, 31A. I 
will uh, deal with this motion after Mr. Bachan, Mr. Wu Chiwai, and Mr. Lang Yu Chong has sp have spoken. So each member will have five minutes. Mr. Albert Chen, you go first. Chairman. When uh, the DS answered Ms. Dr. Fernando John's question, I uh, came to realize this. I followed uh, various studies and consultancy reports on uh, transport from the administration for many, many years. I think uh, the uh, way uh, the proposal is uh, done here is rather unusual, and that is uh, there's a little discussion. There was a little discussion uh, before the uh, PTSS is now proposed. There should be consultation first, and then uh, the paper should be passed, and then discussion with relevant government officials and also uh, the relevant consultants. I don't know whether I have missed anything. I've asked about the decision-making process. How come the administration has decided on these eight issues, and then uh, suddenly I uh, came to realize that uh, this PTSS is here because of dialogue or communication between uh, some legislators and the administration, well, some uh, deputy secretaries or and also uh, Professor Anthony Zhang know nothing about transport. So in the government, now it is laymen leading the experts. Many people have said that uh, Po Chen doesn't know anything about um, infrastructure and planning. Uh, he was never involved when he was a legislator. He was uh, meant uh, to be the deputy financial secretary at the beginning of uh, the this term. I think Po Chen has uh, learned quickly, but Anthony Zhang uh, really knows nothing about uh, transport planning. So it was lobbied um, by Dr. Fernando Zhang, and then he included PWD in topical in the topical study. What about myself and uh, Leung Kuo Hong that have never had any uh, private communications uh, with uh, the secretary? Because I look down on this uh, secretary. Once he has become the secretary, he does not mention uh, June fourth anymore. When uh, he was party uh, to uh, the uh, Cry uh, to ask uh, Tang uh, uh, Tang Li Young to step down. No, no, please go back to your question, Mr. Chen. So, I ask you whether you can withdraw this paper and consult widely on the scope of the study before you come back. Are you willing to do that? Well. On the 5th of November, we submitted a plan to the transport panel, and uh, enclosures 1 and 2 were in the report. There was no change, so we have completed uh, the consultation of uh, the panel. But you've never consulted the public and also the sectors. Well, we, we said. Um, Well, after we have started the PTSS, the consultant uh, will consult the stakeholders and uh, will uh, then um, seek views on the scope of the study. And uh, there is room for adjustment to the scope. No, you cannot adjust the scope. After you have got funding from the FC, then you cannot change uh, these eight items. 
Well, then I give you 10 more items. A study to cover the MTLCL, uh, the financial arrangements of MTLCL, and uh, project arrangements between the administration and MTLCL to study the accountability of uh, the board of the MTLCL and also the fair mechanism. And uh, also a passenger demand uh, from cross boundary uh, uh, traffic. And also traffic arrangements uh, for uh, new towns and uh, bus interchange. I have so many suggestions. Please include all of them. Thank you, Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Thank you. I just want to say then the um, policy of a quarter priority to railway has. Uh, has been effective because a uh, uh, railway is responsible for half of the traffic demand in Hong Kong. Of course, it will also bring uh, negative impacts. And there is also a competition uh, for uh, commuters. And as a result, you need this RTSS. I asked the Deputy Secretary many, many times, can you confirm the uh, established principles in the two CTSS? I hope to see the scope of the study revised in the FC paper in order to confirm those established principles. And um, point eight of uh, the topical study. Uh, there are so many qualifiers to accessible transport facilities for PWDs. Will you revise this part as well so that in your FC paper you can Uh, confirm uh, to include uh, difficulties encountered by PWDs when using public transport without uh, the considerations in this paper. Mr. Chen, yes, we will make uh, appropriate adjustments to the uh, FC paper. And secondly, I don't think there is some any direct relationship between uh, enclosure to and also the creation of post. We are using existing resources to do the topical study. Uh, whenever all government policies have to uh, have regard for actual circumstances. Now, for instance, if you pick a particular uh, type of vehicle for uh, PWD, it is uh, perhaps it's because of uh, the merits. So, uh, the word "actual operate" the words "actual operating situation" is rather neutral. Enclosure one, rows and uh, positioning review. It is just a topic. Uh, public transport should satisfy the needs of different sectors. How can we provide uh, to address the need of PWDs in all different types of uh, public transport that would uh, certainly be included in the PTSS? Mr. Wu. Uh, the uh, demand for cross-boundary uh, public in public transport services is growing very rapidly. Can you include this in uh, your study as well? Will it form one of your uh, assumptions? Yes, I know that this is a pressing issue. 
judging from uh, members' views, and so we include this in our topical study. Our target is to complete all eight areas within this legislative year. So, well, I'm willing to include that, but I cannot promise to uh, complete a study of the new item within this legislative year. Mr. Yu Chong. Yes, I'd like to uh, follow up on my previous question. I know that the government likes to do a lot of studies, but not all recommendations arising are feasible as a result. We feel that we have wasted a lot of uh, resources and time, uh, such as uh, the recent uh, report on universal retirement protection. Professor Chow was asked to do it, and uh, after uh, the report is published, uh, there is another public consultation. I'd like to know whether this study will only consider feasible options. They must be feasible, and uh, will the administration really implement them is also another concern. Of course, Mr. Shen said that they would report to this council. Of course, everything you will report to the council. But will uh, this study face the same fate of Professor Chow's report? For instance, a major change in policy. Uh, such as a change in the seating capacity of PLBs. If uh, the conclusion of the PTSS is yes, and yet uh, government policy says no, then it can is a waste of resources. So can you give us a very clear undertaking? All the recommendations will be implemented unchanged. Mr. Chen, please. Um, our work comprises of two parts. First is the consultancy study and the new post. Um, serves to direct the consultant in their work. And the second part is um, after the government receives the report, we will conduct some analysis and come up with recommendations. So that, that's the second part of our work. And um, we will report on the viable recommendations. We will, um, we will launch um, what we can. We will do what we can. For the second part, um, the consultant will provide background information for the government's consideration. Right? Are you? Um, are they come? Are they going to come up with any um, policy recommendations? Um, they would come up with the policy recommendations. Um, the policy options will be specific, right? Yes, and we will look at these options and report to the Legislative Council. Um, for such specific recommendations, are they going to share the report with the government only or with the entire public? The entire process will be transparent. Um, the executive summary will be published. And the integrated an integrated report will be submitted to Lashko. You are going to um, publish the report before um, it's shared with Lashko, right? Um, it's we are still two and a half years away, and uh, we have noted your question, but I cannot um, answer this question right now. Chairman, I don't want to make a commitment before I know your plan. You you have a work plan, right? Um, we haven't discussed the specifics yet, but as the responsible official, um, I don't see any problems with your um with your recommendation. Well, this is very important, Chairman, because it really um, affects whether I agree to the proposal or not. When you have a report, you should also let the public know. That's my view. 
I I understand your view. Um, as a responsible officer, I will, um, I will uh, submit this recommendation to, um, to the relevant um, officials. Chairman, can you? Um, does it mean that the government will commit to doing that? Yes, I think you can uh, put it that way. We only have ten minutes left, and I have to um, deal with the motion moved by Mr. Albert Chen. According to Rule Thirty One A of the uh, Rules of Procedure, um, I'd like to invite Mr. Albert Chen to read out his motion. Um, according to Rule Thirty One A of the Establishment Subcommittee Rule, I move the motion that some. Um, um, when the uh, administration creates the um, um, AOSGC position to conduct um, roles and positioning review under PTSS, the government must first complete CTS4. Thank you very much, Mr. Chen. I have considered this motion, and um, and my verdict is that um, this motion is directly related to the agenda item being discussed. Um, since I've already made a decision, um, I will put this motion into votes um, to see whether members will discuss the motion moved by Mr. Albert Chen. Now, um, um, my, um, I have made a decision to Consider whether or not we will, whether the establishment subcommittee will deal with the motion moved by Mr. Albert Chen. That's according to Rule 31A of the ESC procedure. Um, we will have an open ballot. Now, Mr. Wang Ting Kuang asked for an open ballot. The uh, the bell will ring for five minutes. Seven
好，現在開始。Voting begins. Before I announce the results, please verify your votes. Voting ends. The results are as follows. Thirteen in favor and eight against. Um, we have no abstention. So the proposal to move the motion has been passed. Um, since we've already um, we are already at 10:28 p.m. We have to hand over this conference room at 10:30. This motion on paragraph 31A of the procedure will um, continue to be discussed next time. The next meeting will be held on the 11th of May. 11th of March, um, 10:45 a.m. So I'd like to take this chance to wish you a very happy and healthy Chinese New Year.